Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the SVG On Demand. Uh, Christian Hernandez is here, Associate Editor and Social Media Manager here with you for the Sports Video Group. We have a uh, pleasure to speak with Aaron Kennedy. He is the Vice President of Game Day Production and Broadcast Operations uh, with the San Francisco 49ers. They're one of the teams that are always ahead of the technological curve in the NFL. Uh, you guys are doing something really special uh, this Thursday. Obviously, it took a lot uh, of planning in, in uh in advance and for other games offline, but I don't want to spoil it. So Aaron, I'll give you the pleasure of telling, uh, telling the audience what you guys are doing this Thursday for Thursday Night Football. Yeah, this Thursday, um, we are going to roll out a five camera array. Uh, all of the cameras are 8K, 120 frame per second cameras, and uh, they will hit our replay system. And it will be a, uh, it'll be a milestone in our industry of, of how we are pushing the envelope with technology. Perfect. AK is always uh, the next level of production that everyone's trying to, to achieve. So first of all, I don't want to uh, jinx you yet, but congrats uh, on getting to this Thank achievement. Uh, can't wait to see how it looks on Thursday Night Football. But let's get down to the nitty gritty. Aaron, where, what are the locations of the cameras? Uh, what's the actual hardware of the cameras? And tell me a little bit about the, uh, the workflows that you guys are going to do on Thursday. Yeah, well, I'll start off by saying um, a couple of years ago, one of our partners, Foxconn, came to us and asked us how would we implement 8K technology into the stadium? And you know, an end-to-end -end 8K system is not realistic in today's environment, especially with budgets and whatnot. Um, so we, we started thinking, how could we implement it? Um, we have 4K cameras here um, and uh, our replay systems can take 4K cameras. Uh, and then we started going down the path of how would we implement the 8K camera? And uh, so, what we did is a tried and true method. Uh, when they asked, how would we do this? I immediately went to the tried and true uh, thought process of sideline, sideline, goal line, goal line. Right. Um, you'll see that in marquee football events, whether it's Super Bowl or championship games, Sunday night football does them, uh, college football playoffs, when they add just so many cameras, it's a great look for making a decision on the field. Um, now, I've only ever saw that done with 4K cameras or 1080p cameras or 1080 cameras. Um, so we thought, let's, let's do this with 8K cameras. Um, I've seen demonstrations with one 8K camera here and there, whether it's football or hockey or baseball, uh, but I've never seen a full camera array of 8K cameras. So the concept is not new, uh, but doing it with 8K cameras, uh, I think is new. Um, 8K 120 frames per second, uh, there's a lot of challenges with that. Right. Each camera is 32 3G inputs. So uh, the, the, the replay machines uh, break it down to 3G inputs and you need 32 inputs per camera to get that into your replay system. From there, we can zoom in, pan and scan anywhere we want and, and really get the detail out of something that might be happening 120 yards away. Um, because of the digital zoom that you can actually get in there and, and do it. Obviously, there's many benefits of having this type of uh, system in place for games where you want to see, uh, you know, the, the decisions are very minute and to the T. You got to see if someone's pinkies and bounds or did they complete the process of the catch. Uh, but take me to the testing process when you were still kind of tinkering and practicing and getting those things implemented. What were some of the challenges or, uh, you know, hurdles that you guys had to overcome during that kind of rehearsal process? Well, the workflow is certainly has to be factored in. Um, when you need to make the time to zoom in and keyframe in on an actual action or something that's happening on the field, it's not going to be your first replay look. Right. So you're going to have one or two replay looks that come out of your normal um, 3G output uh, replays. And then this would be your second or third look to really be able to go in and identify what you want to show, in our case, the coaching staff. Um, you know, in a normal non-COVID year, you know, you want to show 65, 70,000 fans at the same time, and hopefully you get that, their energy up and we can overturn a call that would hopefully go in our favor, right? And as you know, and probably a lot of people watching this, um, we have the unique ability in football to show the coach what we want him to see on the video boards and the unique ability to challenge that call if, you know, if, if that's the case, right? 
And certainly uh, as a home field advantage, uh, we're going to show what's going to help us and we're not going to show what's going to hurt us. Uh, there's obviously rules in the NFL of things you have to show, uh, but there are some times that you can show stuff, uh, a replay that's going to help your team on the field. And Kyle throws a, the red flag and, you know, they look at it back in New York and they come back and say that plays overturned or that plays confirmed and, you know, touchdown 49ers in the corner of the end zone kind of thing. Right. And that's where the sideline and the goal line cameras you can really zoom in and, and get the detail of those. So Aaron, you were instrumental on the tech side of getting this infrastructure kind of in place, but I spoke with Laura Johnson, who is the director of game day presentation and love events in the, on the gridiron series, knowing the work that she does uh, either on a Monday, on a Sunday, or, you know, on a Thursday, this Thursday coming up, being able to give them a different look or a different flavor to add to that show that they're already doing. What does that mean uh, for, for your tech side, for, for the whole entire crew being, you know, hey, we've never had this before, but this is something new that we're willing to give our team. And even so, when fans do come back, what do you expect for them to, you know, expectations for them for when they do end up coming back? LJ's on my team. So she's right. well, she's very familiar with what we're doing up here. And um, with, the, with, um, with implementing this kind of, we were hoping to get most of this done in the off season leading up. So I could really kind of lead the charge on the production side, uh, which I normally do. Uh, and, and as I said, LJ and I work very closely together and she's producing the game and uh, whether it's uh, uh, me being an engineer on game day or Monday through Friday being the engineer in the control room, uh, I wear a lot of different hats that way. Um, but she's, she's well versed on what we're, what we're doing. Uh, she has a great technical uh, knowledge on, on how we would put that into the game. Um, She's usually off dealing with partnership activations and all sorts of things in a non-COVID year. Uh, things have certainly shifted. So that series has been fantastic. I Thank love you. watching those. And, um, uh, you know, she, she kind of spelled out some of the changes that we're dealing with with COVID. Um, so our audience right now is really the players and the coach, right? Um, so this year with COVID, uh, we're going to show, like any year, we're going to show the coach what he needs to see. And we're going to play things on the video boards that the players want to see to keep their energy high um, and get them excited uh, because we don't have 65,000 fans screaming at the top of their lungs. So we're, we're working all these different angles uh, to try and help the team win on the field. That's our first and foremost. That's our priority. And, you know, that's what we'll continue to do going forward. So I had the privilege to speak with Eric Long back in 2018 when they put their two cameras that uh, transmitted 4K at Lincoln Financial Field. Were there any individuals that you reached out, any colleagues in the industry that you asked for, hey, what did you do differently? What were some of the, you know, any advice that you asked from from your compatriots? Um, you know, in this case, no. I, I, this is my 18th year in the league, um, uh, 18th season, I should say. Um, uh, Eric, uh, you know, I used to be Eric's boss back in the day. So he and I go way back. I uh, love that kid. He's doing some fantastic stuff in Philadelphia. Uh, that organization in general pushes the envelope as well. Um, I will say the, 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 one of the biggest reasons why I came out here, though, was uh, at the time, it was the most technologically advanced stadium in the world, and I wanted to be a part of that. And it wasn't just in 2014 when we were labeled that. Uh, the organization constantly pushes that envelope, and that's something that really gets, uh, puts goosebumps on my arms. And, um, you know, I, I love being a part of it. So, uh, again... This wasn't a brand new concept with the camera placement and the camera array. Using the 8K cameras uh, is the new part. Uh, and then how we manipulate the 8K is new as well. Um, what we're finding is the raster of the 8K image is so large that it's not just the sideline anymore. I can go anywhere on the field that that's in that lens and zoom in on it and get action on the field. So the way we look at it now is we are just map digitally mapping the entire field. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and uh, now, no matter what happens on the field, I can go in after the fact and just grab what I want uh, with an HD output and put it up on the video boards. More access leads to more uh, engaging shots. And hopefully, like you said, it can get some overturned calls to help the team on the field. Uh, yeah. The tech team, I mentioned at the top, you guys are one of the most technologically savvy stadiums, uh, not only in the country, in the NFL, but probably in the world. Uh, 
with that thought in mind, this new uh, implementation and technology, what does that say about the organization and the future of the 49ers have always want to be in, in, you know, in front of the curve? Yeah, well, don't sit on your hands. Keep pushing it. Keep right. pushing it. And, um, you know, there's, uh, there's, an, there's a, you know, age old saying that there's no dumb ideas. Like, you know, it's just put it out there. That's what my recommendation to anybody out there is put it out there. Um, you know, this kind of technology, it's, it's not cheap. Uh, it is what I would consider bleeding edge. Um, but if you can get the support uh, from a, a partner or the team, um, certainly uh, um, take advantage of it. And, and, and as you said, there, there are other teams that kind of do this. Um, um, but uh, the 49ers have always kind of made that a priority uh, ever since I stepped foot in this uh, door in 2014. And um, I was excited to be a part of it then. And I'm excited to be a part of it now. Uh, as you should be. Be as excited as you should, because it's a big uh, accomplishment and micro milestone, as we as we've noted. But Aaron, I appreciate the time, sir. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for talking. Thanks for giving us a deep dive into the the technology. Good luck this uh, Thursday. Uh, say hi to LJ and the rest of the crew, and uh, no, hope no. to see you down the road. Thanks, man. Yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.